Hello, everyone. Nice to have you here. Welcome to a turn of events. My name is Annette Nave. My company is Nave Productions. We are an event production company specializing in corporate, social, and nonprofit. Really happy to have you here. Um, if you are looking to, if you're hosting a new event and you're looking to do um, a virtual event, you're not sure what to do, please contact us because we can give you some great advice. And if you already have a live event that you were, it was supposed to be live, but you want to move it to a virtual platform, we can also help you with that. So we have lots of great ideas and we'd love to help you. So my guest today is super, super awesome, Joe Applebaum. He is just the best ever. We're going to learn about how to leverage LinkedIn after this pandemic is over. He has some great advice and I'm super excited to get started. So let's bring Joe on. Hey, Joe. Hey, Annette. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. So excited to be here. I'm super happy to have you, and I'm sure everybody's going to learn a lot of things from you. So um, so why don't you tell us where you started, how you, I know you have lots of things going on, but give us a little update of who you are, where you started, and where you're at. Oh, uh, thank you so much. So my name is Joe Applebaum, I'm the CEO of Ajax Union. Um, I remember starting out, really my first stint in entrepreneurship was in school. But really watching my mother when I was a teenager in her store on the Lower East Side. Um, everybody gets their inspiration for entrepreneurship from somewhere. And for me, it was watching her work 16 hours a day, trying to make ends meet, trying to make enough money for our family to live. So I don't know if you've ever been to Lower East Side, but Delancey and Orchard Street is where she had her store during uh, the time when the Orchard Street was actually a mall. Um, and she sold women's clothing. And I remember watching her, watching her struggle, struggle, trying to get to a sustainable business. Eventually, by 9-11, she went out of business. And when I started my business, I was fortunate enough to get on the Inc. 500 as one of the fastest growing companies in the US within 18 months of me working there full time. And when I look back to ask myself, what were the things that I did differently that my mother did? And I found many, many things. But one of the things that I found was the difference between relying on luck versus having an actual strategy. So I've become a strategist. I become a business strategist, a marketing strategist, a LinkedIn strategist, because I believe that the right strategy will save you a decade. So I often ask business owners, I say, what's your strategy? And they look at me like I fell off the wall. Like, what's a strategy? We're like, strategy is like a very complicated word, something that people do that are very strategic. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be complicated. If it's too complicated, Albert Einstein says you don't understand it. If you can't describe it simply, you can't understand. You don't understand it. So understanding your business means understanding how much money you want to make, understanding who you're targeting, and understanding what you need to say to them to get them to become a customer. So I help people be able to do that. And it's because I saw my mother struggle so much with a lack of strategy and eventually go out of business that I now, um, everything about my life is strategic. I lost 95 pounds in the past couple of years. I use a strategy called High Energy Secrets to lose those 95 pounds and keep it off. And I wrote a book about it. So for me, everything in life is a strategy. You want to have a great relationship, you need to have a great strategy. You want to have a great body, you have to have a great strategy. Even if you want to have a great mind, you want to learn stuff, there's a strategy to learning things efficiently in a way that you remember. I recently had a guy who is the memory guy come and talk to a bunch of Inc. 5000 CEOs because I organized a group of CEOs, and he taught me a strategy to remember things that would allow me to have much more likely to be be able to recall things when I need them. Um, so it's it's fantastic and it's fabulous to be able to learn these strategies in life and in business. And I love that you have me over here and I love our relationship. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah, we're, we're good friends. So can you give us one of these strategies or is it a whole concept? Because we're big on strategy as well. Like you have to have, you know, we want to be very strategic about planning your event and what is the strategy behind it? So I'm very big on the strategy piece of it as well, but can you, what's this memory thing you're talking about? Yeah, so the memory thing is, um, he has a bunch of different ways that you can remember things. Um, one of the ways is by his memories by association. He doesn't necessarily talk about that concept of it, but a lot of it has to do with you remember things that you put into certain categories. So he kind of teaches you how to put things into categories um, how to organize your mind, kind of like a filing cabinet, and the information that you get in, like to pay attention to it. And a lot of it has to do with people not being focused. When you hear something, you're not really listening to it. So part of it's really listening to it 
and associating it in your mind in a way that you're going to remember. So you kind of go through a whole system of how to do that. Very interesting. I have problems with remembering people's names because when I look at someone and I'm meeting them, I'm looking at them. I'm looking at their. You know, one of the tips, one of the tips he gives specifically if you're on an event and you want to remember people's names, is like repeat their name, but don't repeat it in a weird way. Repeat it in a smart way. So he right. teaches you ways. Memory is also by repetition. So remember, remembering like Annette, Annette, Annette. You don't want to say Annette, 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 Annette. You could say something like, hey, Annette, it was really nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to checking out this incredible event. So Annette, let me ask you a question. How did you build this? Uh, how did you even come up with this whole, uh, this whole concept of being an event planner? Right. So Annette, I was thinking, and see, I said Annette three times in a non-weird way. Right. Sometimes some people overdo it and they're like, Annette, Annette, listen, Annette, Annette, I have a question for you, Annette. And then it becomes really weird. You want to mix <laughs> it in and like break it down over the course of sentences. Right. And say it a few times to remember it. All right, cool. Great. All right. Well, let's jump in. So you have a Facebook, we have, I mean, we have a LinkedIn profile and we have a LinkedIn page. How should we be posting? On right. those? So yeah, so a lot of people ask me the question is, should I post on my company page or should I post on my LinkedIn profile? Your profile represents you as an individual. You have a first name, a last name. Some people even have a maiden name. I don't have any maiden names because I'm <laughs> not a maiden. <laughs> but, uh, there, but on your profile, see, the difference between a profile page and a company page is usually a profile has a lot more followers than a company page. Right. A company page usually has very few followers, so you want to post where you're going to get the most exposure. Because posting is about visibility, it's about getting exposure. So if you post on your personal profile, you're going to get a lot more exposure than if you post on your company page. It doesn't mean you should neglect your company page. You could build, there are strategies to build up your company page. The priority should be first on building up your followership on your personal profile because ultimately at the end of the day, especially if you're a small business owner, your LinkedIn profile is going to be the source of most of the revenue that comes into you, most of the referrals that come into you if you're using it appropriately, that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck because people refer business to you as an individual, not to your business. You build trust as an individual much more than you build trust as a business. So you want to first prioritize from an organic standpoint to build out your personal profile. Now, if you want to spend money on advertising, you can spend money on advertising promoting your page. And a lot of people do that because if you look at the feed, you'll notice that there's always a profile update first, then there's a company page sponsored. And then if you go further, it's basically just profile, 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 maybe one or two pages that you follow. But for the most part, it's all going to be profile updates. So if you want to be on the feed, make sure that you're prioritizing your profile. Okay, good. And I thank God because I have a lot more followers. I think I have like 100 on my company page, which is not that great. And I have over 8,000 on my profile. So at least I know I'm doing that right. So how do I get someone to answer my LinkedIn direct messages? This is... Okay. Always a big question. Yeah, this is always a big question. And what I often ask people is, how many messages have you sent? And they're like, I don't send any messages because nobody wants to answer them. I was like, you can't have somebody answer messages that you never sent. <laughs> they're like, wow, I never really thought about that, Joe. It's kind of like not even showing up. I think Woody Allen says that 95% of getting the job is showing up to the interview. But right. most people, they show up and throw up. That means they're vomiting all over their contacts and they're doing it on a small scale. So they're getting lots of rejection. Mm -hmm. So instead of showing up and throwing up, have a better strategy, which means do the greeting, feeding, and meeting system. Then your Father's Day is coming, right? I'm sure you're connected to a bunch of men or even women on LinkedIn. Send them a happy Father's Day message. Don't ask them for anything. Start with greeting. You want to be able to have the reputation on LinkedIn that you're not a person that takes up people's time, that you're just sending good karma towards people. Then later you can ask them a question and then later you can send them information, invitations, introductions, personalization, appreciation. There's lots of other things you can do in the DM. But the first step is message 100 people and see how many responses you get with a greeting. We have one guy that took our course and started properly greeting his contacts. He ended up closing two seventy-five thousand dollars deals in the first 30 days of him just greeting contacts because wow. it turned into conversations that he would have never had because he's hoping that, you know, you send out five direct messages, you don't get a response, you lose your mind. You know that 80% of salespeople don't send, don't do more than one or two follow-ups. But 80% of sales are made after five to 10 follow-ups. So most people that are making most of the money is because they're following up, following up, following up, following up. So make a list of a thousand people that you're going to message over the course of the next six months. 
and then message them at least five to 10 times. And you're going to see that a percentage of them, it could be 10%, it could be 20%, will respond over time if you're smart about how you're doing it. And it doesn't have to be a thousand. You can start with like 50 or a hundred. If it feels overwhelming. Don't do one and, and then wonder yeah. why no one responded. Right. You have to, and you have to be consistent and not, you know, you don't want to bug them. Obviously you don't want to be, uh, you know, bugging on them, but if they, it does take a lot of time to get responses. So there is a, a small, um, you know, you have to kind of weigh that out. So what is that? If you, how many times should you respond to them? Like so how my recommendation is have a sequence of at least five messages that you send somebody before you really say, well, this person's not even on LinkedIn. Um, I have a sequence of over a hundred messages that I can actually go after somebody for like for the, for the longest period of time. But what I always tell people is don't be annoying. That's the key. The key is always be adding value in every interaction. You want to be known as a person who literally just continues and continues and continues to add value without selling because until somebody shows you indicators that they want to buy, there's no point in selling anything because nobody wants to buy anything that they don't even know that you exist. They're not even communicating. So I always tell people before you try to sell something, first try to have a conversation, start to build a relationship. I recently heard somebody, um, he said that fear, when you have fear of having that conversation or sending that DM and you don't send it, you're a hundred percent more likely not to get the deal because 50% of actually even getting into the deal is even having a conversation. And Which what's is not the, even having a conversation because you're stuck in fear. And what's the worst that can happen? I mean, it's, you know. So, we'll say no. Yeah. So Jessica is asking, what do you suggest as a method to keep track of those thousand contacts? So we actually are, have, that's a great question. We actually have a webinar that we're doing next week. And I posted a link to the webinar, Jessica. And I'll send you the link to register for the webinar as well. Um, it basically having a dashboard will allow you to be able to do that. Yeah. Having a dashboard will allow you to do that. That's the key. Most people don't have any dashboards. They absolutely have no dashboards at all. So you have to be able to have a dashboard to track your contacts properly. If you're trying to do it on LinkedIn, it's not going to work. Right. So what, you want, what you want to do instead is maybe have a spreadsheet or have a CRM or something. Um, we, we give our students at Evergreen an actual dashboard they can use to track all their connections to see who they are greeting, feeding, and meeting, who they recognize, strategize, and prioritize. Most people don't have a strategy. They're winging it. And it's really hard to do it just with LinkedIn alone. You have to have a dashboard. Yeah, yeah. So um, how do I get hundreds of my connections to direct message me? The best way to get people to message you is for you to be active on LinkedIn. When you post something on LinkedIn and ask your connections to DM you, for let's say for example, you say I have a virtual uh, a virtual event strategy checklist that will guarantee you a um, hundred people to attend your virtual events. Um, even if you don't use an event planner like me, you're going to get a hundred people if you download this thing. Send me a DM and I will send you this checklist absolutely free. You're going to get a hundred DMs for people asking you for the checklist. That's what's going to end up happening. Right. If you prepare something that's truly, truly valuable to your 8,000 people and post about it, you're going to get lots of people DMing you about it. Um, you can also set your birthday up to any day. I don't know if you like doing that, but the second you set your birthday to a day, LinkedIn sends out a response to everyone saying, hey, it's your birthday. And yeah. even if it's not your birthday, everyone wishes you happy birthday, and that's fine. But by, by the way, I'm born every single day. I'm I know. I, I actually don't really know when your birthday is because I think every month is your birthday. You, you post it so, and you it's just- your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> you do that just to get like noticed is like to get- No, visible. I do that just to be able to see how many people are actually paying attention. I have people that send me the same happy birthday message every single yeah. month. And I'm loving it and I respond thank you. And then next month they send happy birthday and I respond thank you. And the next yeah. month they send happy birthday and I respond thank you. Um, and we're building an actual relationship of like, happy birthday, thank you, happy birthday, thank you, happy birthday, thank you. And it, it could be a song. Um, but you know what what I want to show people is that there are many ways to get attention. You don't have to change your birthday. My birthday is actually November 16th. I'm a Scorpio. But what I what I love telling people is you can you can post stuff and get people to message you. You can add a change to your uh, to your company, to your role. And that notifies people. Um, you can have an anniversary. You can change your anniversary around um, the dates of your company. And then everyone gets notified that you have an anniversary and everybody messages you that way. There's lots of different ways to get DMs, but the best way to do it 
is to be able to look at people's profiles, engage with people's content, and then post unique messages that have people want to message you. You have to give people a reason to message you. One of the things that I tell people in my about section, and I get messages from people that I build really meaningful relationships with that turn into clients, revenue, and referrals, by simply writing in my LinkedIn about section, there's an about section called a summary. I write, if you read this till the end, please send me a message letting me know that you did. Yeah. And very few people actually read my entire about section because it's 2,500 characters. So it's a lot to read. Right. But the people that do and they pay attention to detail that truly like me, they will send me a message that says, I actually read your whole about section and I absolutely loved it and learned a lot from it. Thank you so much. And those people I get on the phone with and turn into a real relationship. But I've had so many people message me like that, telling me just a simple little hack like that is so useful. By the way, if you're watching this live right now, put a dollar sign in the chat. <laughs> exactly. We all need dollar signs. Okay. So since you mentioned the profile, what's the best way to optimize your profile? Well, there are three main sections to your profile. There are lots of things you can do to optimize your profile. You can customize your URL. You can customize your contact info. You can do recommendations. There's lots of different things that you can do to get a better profile on LinkedIn. But the three main sections are your identity, your summary, and your history. Your identity tells people who you are right when they look at you. It's your photo. It's your background photo. It's your headline. It's who you are as a person. So what is your identity? Most people just write entrepreneur or CEO. What I like to write, in, in addition to just writing CEO and the name of my company there and under the headline, I like to write who I serve and how I help them. Most people don't do this. When you write who you serve and how you help them, it makes it much more likely for people to understand your business because people understand your business through that context. Um, the second section, which is your summary section, um, that's your about section. You could add featured, um, featured posts, featured articles there. But more importantly, most people miss out having call to action there. So having a call to action in the first couple of lines, getting people to be able to reach out to you. You know, so many people have an about section and they don't put contact info there. It's a very big missed opportunity because someone that's not connected to you on LinkedIn that comes to your profile and goes there and doesn't see contact info, they're going to miss out. I recently wanted to introduce somebody to a guy that creates courses and I wanted to make an email intro. We were connected on LinkedIn. I looked in his about section to get his email and it wasn't there. I couldn't communicate with him. I looked in his contact info, his email wasn't there either. So he missed out an opportunity to get an introduction because he didn't make it easy for me. Right. And then the third part is your history, which is what have you done in the past? Everybody. I often see people was, I was a head waiter and I was this and that. I'm like, people don't need to know that. People don't need to know at every single place you ever interviewed at or yeah. every place you ever internship at. Put what's most relevant to your current opportunity, to the current thing that you're doing, delete all the garbage, and then put in actual images, put in actual text there, tell a story and really build a relationship with the person reading your profile. Most people are not going to read your profile, but the people that do, you want to make sure that they're impressed. Right. I. You know, the whole bullet thing is not what you suggest, right? There's more of a storyline there. Yeah, tell a storyline. You could make it in bullet point format if you want. It depends on your preference and who your target market is. If you're targeting ADD entrepreneurs, you want to do bullets. Yeah. Uh, it depends on who you're targeting and what you're trying to accomplish. But ultimately, at least add information there. Some people just put the where they worked and how long they worked there, but they didn't add any text there. Yeah, you have to add information. So what's the most effective, effective thing to do on LinkedIn to get the best ROI? Well, there are really three things you need to be doing on LinkedIn each day. And we have a tip, uh, a book, an ebook that we give with 30 LinkedIn tips that we're giving away to anybody watching this for free. So I put a link in the comments um, for that so you guys can go grab that ebook. But the three most important things that you can do every single day is number one is you could post once a day because a post expires after 24 hours. So make sure that you're posting at least once a day something of value. It doesn't have to be about your business. It could be about anything. I mean, I recently posted a post that got thousands of views and it was simply, please post your favorite emoji in the comments. And I got dozens and dozens and dozens of people to post and thousands of people to see that. And they loved it. People want something to do on social media, right. give them something to do and be the center of attention. The second thing you want to do is you want to engage. That means you want to like, comment, mention, endorse, recommend, get involved. That builds trust with people. You might have that visibility, but if you don't have trust, you're just an influencer that makes noise. You want to be a real person to your network. And then the third thing is you have to send a direct messages every single day to people in your network. Cause if you're not DMing, no one cares about you. If you're not in the sliding in the DM, 
So Annette, I DM you all the time. I message you. I WhatsApp you all the time. You've got to slide in people's DMs in order to get on the phone eventually. So first is um, you have to be posting. The second thing is you have to be engaging. And the third thing you have to do is you have to be messaging. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, the other thing that I was going to say, and you brought, I think I lost it now. Um, and somebody posted a question. Is, it, is, is LinkedIn just for CEOs or to find your peer CEOs? Um, it's not. The main thing for LinkedIn used to be a recruiting platform, Ricky. But now it's not a recruiting platform as much as it is a networking platform. So the purpose of LinkedIn is for you to build relationships with the people in your life that are in the position to refer business to you or maybe refer you to get a job, but refer business to you. And that's what networking is about. Networking is about building relationships, staying top of mind and growing your business. Right, right. All right, so how do I gener generate qualified leads? The best way to generate qualified leads on LinkedIn is to actually have a strategy so you understand who a lead is. Most people want leads, but they don't take the time to identify what a qualified lead is for them. So you have to first break that down. Annette, what's, who's a qualified lead for you? I'll tell you for me real quick. For me, a qualified lead is a company that does over $10 million in annual sales. They're located in the New York City area. They have a marketing director. They have a sales team. And they understand the value of B2B marketing. They're in the B2B space and they understand the value of B2B marketing with a solid strategy. So that's a very specific demographic type of company that I am going after. And because my demographic is so small, there's only a few thousand companies like that, it makes it much, much easier for me to be able to generate qualified leads because I know who I'm going after. I know who I'm asking for. So if I say, Annette, do you know anyone that runs a $10 million business in New York City that does B2B, that has a sales team? And you say, of course, I know Judson. I know this person. I know that, I know that person. And you make the introduction and often it'll turn into an account over long periods of time for me. Right, right, great. What about for you? So I'm not as specific, but we um, are targeting corporations who uh, have uh, who do live events and they want to move them to a virtual platform, or they're looking to do a virtual event. I mentioned this earlier in the when we first started, uh, you weren't on, and um, they may have an inside team, an in-house team, but a lot of people are you know they've cut back and a lot of people have lost their jobs, so they may have an in-house team or they don't have one and they need us to come in and help them. So. Again, we help with the strategy around, um, you know, doing a virtual event, which is a lot different than a live event. You can't be doing, you know, hours and hours on in front of a computer with events right now. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that need to, the strategy needs to change. So, um, you know, but we, I need to probably be a little more specific on that because I know you're like, B to B to I know we we talk about this a lot so and I can help you I can help you sit down and strategize and figure yeah. out exactly your target market and when you pick your target market a lot of people have a fear of picking their target market because they're afraid if that they're specific right. they're going to miss out on opportunities that's just fear the truth right. is I'm a B two B marketer but you know how many times people come to me with B two C businesses people yeah. come to me with e I'm I'm redoing I'm rebranding an e commerce company right now. This company does five million in revenue. They want to get to hundred million. We're rebranding them. This is an e-commerce B two C company, complete three hundred and sixty from my average B two B company. But we're right. capable of doing that because we service eleven hundred clients. But that doesn't stop me from getting those customers because I brand myself as a B two B marketer. It doesn't stop me from getting those clients when I'm doing outbound. This is what I'm doing. I know who I'm going after. So your message is more for the outbound. Don't worry about the inbound. The inbound will come anyway. And so, what do you do when you have like I also um, target event planners on how to start. I teach how to start an event planning business without making costly mistakes. So you know it's tricky because I have I have brides, I have corporate, I have you know um, nonprofits, and then I also have event planners. So you know I think I'm pretty good at juggling that, but it it can be tricky. So well, how do you what do you say to people that are that have multiple target markets? I would say focus. Focus on one target market every 90 days. So do it in sprints. So one 90 day, um, one 90 day period, you'll focus on event planners. Another 90 day period, you'll focus on weddings. When is the wedding season? 
Right. Um, or, you know, sometimes there is no weddings. Like in the winter, there isn't as many weddings as there are in the summer. Or people are not really thinking about it as much or vice versa. Well, that's so, true a lot now too because of virtual so yeah so you want to you want to be able to change your target market quarterly um and try different things and whichever one's really taking off whichever one's getting the most traction that's the one that you're going to want to stick with you want to pick one and then in your summary you have the ability to write your other target markets there other things that i do you want to pick your main one for these 90 days and then put secondary and and uh, and the third one that you do inside your about section and people will know very, very clearly. They'll go to your about section and they'll read it. They'll be like, oh, she mainly focuses on virtual events and helping people be able to establish virtual events right now because of Corona. But right. she also does in-person events and she also does weddings and she also helps event planners. That's really cool. And yeah. you can, if you go to my profile on LinkedIn, if you go to joelinkedin.com, you can actually see that I also have multiple target markets, right? I do coaching. I help entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. I have a LinkedIn course called Evergreen Networking, where I help coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs be able to go from lurkers to influencers. And with Ajax Union, we help mid-market B2B companies be able to go from having zero funnel, zero strategy, to making it rain qualified leads. So if you take a look at my profile, I write those things, but my main thing is I'm a B2B marketing agency. My secondary thing is I'm a LinkedIn speaker. And then I write the third thing that I do. So you can write multiple things. Just know what your focus is for the next 90 days. Right, right. Okay, so what's the fastest way to set up meetings using LinkedIn with connections of my connections? Right, the fastest way to set up meetings on LinkedIn with the connections of your connections is first identify which connections of your connections you want to meet. So you have to go to LinkedIn search, click on search, click on people, click on second degree contacts, and then segment out by geographic, by demographic, by who you're looking for, and then build yourself a list of people that you wanna build a relationship with. Now, you have something called mutual contacts. Those are the people that you're gonna reach out directly that are connected to you, that are also connected to the second degree contact, and you're gonna say, hey, I noticed you're connected to Bob Annette. Do you mind making an introduction to Bob for me? This is the prepared email introduction that you could make. Here you go. Are you willing to do this? And more times than not, if I email you and I send you a prepared email intro and I send you that person's email, chances are you're going to make an email introduction to that second degree contact very, very quickly. And 80% of introductions turn into appointments. Right. But only 10% of sales reps are actually asking for introductions. So yeah. most people never ask for introductions. If you know, Jora, no mama. Yeah. <laughs> I hardly get any, and when I do, and even if I, listen, I have 8,000 people on my LinkedIn, I, I don't know them all, obviously, but if I make an intro, um, they always, it's just common courtesy, I think, on LinkedIn. They will connect, and there is, and I've made a lot of intros, you know, it just depends sometimes, but people aren't doing that as much, you're right. So, um, all right, so what if my prospects are not on LinkedIn? Should I, is it still worth t my time to spend on LinkedIn? The purpose of LinkedIn is for you to be networking, not prospecting so much, more networking on LinkedIn. So even if your current prospects, even if your current leads are not on LinkedIn, the people that are in the position to refer business to you are on LinkedIn. So your purpose for LinkedIn should be networking more than prospecting. And what you do when you're networking is you build relationships with people that have a relationship with your client. So it might be a CPA on LinkedIn where your clients are CEOs of manufacturing companies that are not on LinkedIn, but you build a relationship with the CPA on LinkedIn and then you get introductions to CPAs. Or your target market might be CFOs of pharma companies and you look on LinkedIn, you see very few and the ones that are there are not active, that's fine. Figure out who else works with CFOs at pharma companies, you might see business insurance agents. Right. So you make relationships with the business insurance agents on LinkedIn and there are 70,000 so you pick the 700 that are locally, you build a relationship with them, and some of them will introduce you to some of their clients that are CFOs at pharma companies. Okay, so what if my business is not B2B, but it's B2C? Does LinkedIn still work for consumer targeted businesses? LinkedIn will work with any business that relies on referrals. So if you're a B2C company that does not rely on referrals, LinkedIn is not the right place for you. But if you need referrals, if you're a high-end custom suit person, if you do weddings for B2C or whatever it is, and you need referrals, LinkedIn will work really well for you 
because that's the point of networking. Networking is for B2C and B2B, but the right type of business. You have to have a large average price, an average value of a customer in order for referrals to be worth it because no one's going to refer a business for 50 cents transaction. But if it's a $5,000 or a $10,000 transaction, even if it's B2C, it's worth to network to get those types of transactions. Now realize that networking takes time. It's something that doesn't happen overnight. You know this in that, that for, from the first day we met you, you didn't get a referral from me right away, but eventually you got a referral that turned into tens of thousands of dollars in revenue for your business because you stayed top of mind, because you built that relationship since the first time you saw me on Egal Adato's podcast. Yes, which was, I was like, I need to know this guy. Plus, he's a rapper, you guys. It's kind of fun, and uh, but he's he's awesome. He's the funnest guy ever. You need to connect with Joe. Okay, so um, I have a question about okay, so engagement on my posts. I post, as you know, but I don't get that much engagement. I get lots of engagement on Facebook. I get more on Instagram, but I can't seem to get the engagement on LinkedIn. What's the? I know we need to tag people and stuff like that, but can you give some tips on that? Yeah, I actually looked at your posts, Annette, um, and I tried to see, okay, why is she not getting engagement? I noticed you're doing a couple of things that you can be doing better. So first of all, congratulations on posting on a regular basis. Most people don't do that. So it's fantastic that you're doing that. Most people absolutely don't do that. Uh, but the first and most important thing that you need to do on LinkedIn is not include links inside your posts. When you include an outbound link inside your post, automatically LinkedIn algorithm says, let's not promote this post. Why? because it wants to keep people inside LinkedIn. It doesn't want people to leave LinkedIn. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're keeping people inside LinkedIn. So instead, write a text only post, write a, a, a post with an image, write a post with a video and see if you get more exposure to that post. The second thing you want to do to get engagement is actually have a call to action. If I took a look at your post, Annette, I'll notice that most of your posts don't have call to action. You're not telling people to like, to comment. You're not telling people to share it. So if you're not telling people what to do, people are like sheep. Sheep need a shepherd. So Annette, be a shepherd. You want my staff? I'll lend you my staff. Be a shepherd. Um, and then the third thing I want you to encourage you to do is to connect and engage with other people's content. Mm -hmm. When you like and comment on other people's stuff, they're much more likely to like and comment on your stuff. Most people are not liking and commenting. Most people are not engaged but find people that actually are engaged, right? How many people are engaged on LinkedIn? A very small percentage because 99% are lurkers. But if you can find that 1% that is liking and commenting on other people's stuff and build a relationship with them and connect with them, then they will like and comment on your stuff if you like and comment on their stuff. So make your list of engaged connections and you're gonna get more engagement. Most people fail to get engagement is because they're not themselves engaged on LinkedIn. They're not liking and commenting for a few minutes each day. So Annette, if you start liking and commenting more on my posts, you're gonna end up getting more exposure to people that are engaged in the comments and those people are gonna like and comment on your posts as well. Yeah, and everyone should like and engage on Joke. How many, follow, you got a lot of people that follow you, right? Like 30,000 or something? Yeah, so I have over 30,000 followers right now. And for me, it's not about going viral. For me, it's about having 1,000 of the right people see me a thousand times a year. I don't want to go viral. I don't want everyone to know who I am. I don't need random people um, that are going to annoy me to just know who I am when I walk into Lowe's. I mean, that happens now every once in a while. I get someone at Lowe's that'd be like, oh, no, Joe, he doesn't sound motivation. Yeah. I was like, leave me alone. I'm trying to buy a freaking hose for my dryer. Like, leave me alone. Like, what are you? Uh, but, you know, bottom line is I want the right 1,000 people to see me 1,000 times a year. That's why I post engage and message on LinkedIn and it turns into millions of dollars in revenue for my business. And the other thing you did was really smart was you took meetups, a LinkedIn, well, we used to meet, we're not meeting in person anymore, but we do online is you created LinkedIn meetups where every, all your connections from LinkedIn, you meet in person, which I thought was really a, an amazing thing to do because now it takes us off of this, you know, off of LinkedIn and into, uh, in person, which I think is great. And you, you'd have like a hundred or more people there, right? Yeah, we have over a hundred. Well, right now we have over a thousand people on LinkedIn on our meetup group right now. So I just posted a link for you guys to join our meetup group. Um, and by the way, you guys are noticing that I'm posting, um, I'm posting stuff inside the comments that are like prepared stuff. Like Joe, how do you have the patience to sit down and type all this up while you're on this and you're on and you're preparing these comments here 
that are just mind-blowingly well-written comments organized with links. How do you do that? Yeah. One word. It's called templates. You need <laughs> templates. Most people don't work off templates. If right. you don't have templates, if you don't have scripts, if you don't have things that are pre-prepared, I can just copy and paste templates from today till tomorrow. I can just fill up the comments with hundreds of templates that I have prepared marketing different things in my life, whether it's my book, whether it's my next seminar, my webinar replay, my meetup, anything that I have going on, I have a template for it. And I want to encourage you to create templates with the most common questions and answers that people ask you, with the things that you want to promote, and just with things that you're always sending people. People often ask me, Joe, tell me about this, tell me about that, and I always have a template for it. So I definitely encourage everybody to create your own series of templates that you could use on a regular basis. And if you start creating more templates for yourself, you're much more likely to have more people be able to engage with your stuff. You see, most people don't have anything prepared. And they say, if you fail to prepare, then you might as well prepare to fail. So for example, if I wanna promote my book, I have a book called High Energy Secrets. Check it out, I just dropped a link with a template about High Energy Secrets. I have another book that I wrote called High Energy Answers. I have a template prepared for my high energy answers. I just shared another. You see, they're just coming in like crazy. And you'll be like, how does he do this? How does he, how does he have time to prepare all this? I want to promote my Blueprint webinar. Boom, I have a whole thing about my Blueprint webinar all ready to go. Most people are not doing this. And you can be different than most people by having everything prepared. Right, right. It's great that you're doing that. So thank you, Brenda. We're so happy that you're here. Okay, so I have some questions, and if you guys have any questions, please, you know, you've got Joe now, so ask the questions. Um, Sue asks, how do I make sure that people remember me on LinkedIn? Sue, the most important thing for people to remember you on LinkedIn is to make people feel a certain way. Annette, you know this, just like I know this, that people don't remember what you say. Yep. People don't remember what you do. People remember how you made them feel. So Brenda, if I sent you a lovely happy birthday message on your birthday, and even your mother didn't say happy birthday to you, but I did, how would that make you feel? That might tickle your pickle. That might tickle your fancy. That might get you excited that Joe gives a damn about you, Brenda. And that's how you're gonna remember me. When you start adding value to other people by greeting, feeding, and meeting, when you start engaging with other people, I remember people that like and comment on my posts. If you like and comment on my stuff, if you send me messages, if you're posting, engaging and messaging, if you're part of my network, if you're making love to me on LinkedIn, I will remember your love. And then I will love back on your content as well. Yes, I love that. Okay, so Josh is asking, how do I get more referrals from my LinkedIn marketing? The way to get more referrals for your LinkedIn marketing is for you to clearly articulate who's a good referral for you. Make sure that is on your profile. Make sure that is as a post. Make sure that you create articles about who your most ideal referral is. I have an extended summary that clearly articulates who you can refer me to and how you can refer them to me. 99.9% .9 of people want referrals, but they don't tell me who they want as a referral. And when I ask them, they say, Joe, can you introduce me to a decision maker? So I was like, oh, you basically want people. Say, come, there's a protest going on in Crown Heights. I'll introduce you to a thousand people right now. They're all friends of mine and I actually joined the protest. It's amazing. They're like, I don't want just regular people. I want decision makers. I was like, those people made a decision to come to the protest. And they're like, no, I don't mean those types of decision makers. You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean? I said, you're making it difficult for me. Make it easy. You want it referrals? Make it easy peasy for people to refer business to you. And that's how you're going to get referrals. Right. It's, it's so true because when this whole pandemic happened and everyone knows me as a live event producer and um, I saw some people posting and I said, you know, we can help with the virtual. They were like, oh, you're doing virtual. So you got to let people know what you're doing. Otherwise, they're not going to know. They don't just can't just assume because I'm I'm an event producer that I'm actually going to do virtual. So I found that even myself, you know, I uh, found that to be interesting. So, um, OK, so, Deborah, how do I become more consistent when it comes to LinkedIn posting? So yeah. I probably touch on this as well. But you go ahead and say that. I'm going to read you uh, a quick quote 
that says that our deepest fear is not that, that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. And there's nothing enlightened about shrinking yourself so that other people won't feel insecure about you. You were meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us. Not within some of us, but within all of us, within everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we liberate ourselves from our own fear, our presence, our authentic presence, automatically liberates other people. So what I want to say to you is that most people are not consistent because they're afraid of not looking perfect. And I'm here to tell you that you ain't broken. You're perfect. So just be yourself, share yourself. And when you are yourself and you share yourself consistently, some people will become allergic to you and that's okay. But then all your lovers, lovers will come out from behind the rocks and they'll be like, where have you been all my life? And they'll fall in love with you. And what will end up happening is you're going to get a following. You're going to be that rock star that's going to get that following. And when you have the following, that's when the money follows that. So if you're not consistent, it's because you have fear stopping you from being consistent. A lack of preparation and a tremendous amount of fear will stop you from taking action. And by the way, one of the symptoms of lack of preparation is fear. That's a symptom. The source is preparation. So having a content calendar, having a, an asset library, working with dashboards. And we teach people how to create all the stuff. We give you the frameworks, the checklists, the cheat sheets, everything that you need inside our course. And we do lots of free webinars about how to do this yourself. But the bottom line is you need to learn exactly how to get over that fear. And that's what's going to create consistency. You will not create habits in your life. You will not create habits in your life if you're afraid to take the first step. And right. the path to finishing the marathon is just going one more step and building the habit. You know, I, I, I heard a podcast this morning and I listen to podcasts every single day to reinforce my mindset. Mm -hmm. And this guy said, people do things. Why do they do things because they know they should do them? No. Do they do things because somebody told them they should do them? No. People do things because they feel like doing things. I'll say this again. Write this down in the comments. People do things because they feel like it. If you don't feel like it, you ain't going to do it. If you don't feel like it, you ain't going to do it. So you have to get into feeling like it, which means building your mindset of realizing that posting is a must every single day, no matter what. When I get up in the morning, besides the posts that are automatically going up on LinkedIn, I manually create a new post every single day. It's a habit that I create. Just like I make my bed every day, which is a habit that I didn't have till I was 36. I do that too. I, but I didn't have the habit my whole life. I was like, ah, oh, pay somebody. I'll pay a cleaning help to do this. Why should I do this myself? Waste of time. And then it was an insight that I heard from Hal Elrod. He's like, you make your bed every day. You will learn the power of creating habits for yourself. And then when every time I look at my bed made, I'm like, I didn't even know that I did that. Just like when I post a post on LinkedIn, I didn't even think about it. It just happened. Right. So I want you to create those habits because you feel like it. Learn how to control your feelings and you'll control the rest of your life. So you can write a blog because I do. This is what I do, and I want to a little touch more a little more on fear after I say this. But you can write a blog, create posts from the blog, get some images that you create that are branded. You can use Canva to do that. C A N V A dot com, pretty friendly. And then Hootsuite, H O O T S U I T E, is a great site that you can schedule. You want to engage yourself too. You want to personally engage. You don't want to just blast everything out like an automatic blast, but you want to engage as well. But that's how you can at least be consistent. And on Instagram, if you post on Instagram, you can shoot it to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever else. And then um, it's one post. So, and then stories is super important. So try to do your stories. People love to look at stories because they, they're quick and we're all doing, trying to do things quickly now. So, um, and then fear, I just want to mention on fear because I know that you were not always this brave and vivacious and outgoing and fearless.
So touch a little bit on that and how you overcame that. So I used to be super, super afraid of my own photo. I mean, if you go back to my Facebook, click on my Facebook, friend me, go back to my 2009 photo, you'll see a picture of a cheetah, a cat. That was me. I was a cheetah. I used to be a big eater. I used to eat everything I saw. <laughs> so that's what I was. I, I was afraid of my own photo because I was afraid that people would judge me. I was afraid, you know, I said, I'm a private person. I don't want my photo online. I didn't like the way that I sounded, you know, me, my voice. Ew, who wants to hear a nasal Joe Applebaum? Like, yeah. who is Joe Applebaum anyway? Like, why would I want to hear myself? Right. And so I made myself small. Hence, I read that quote. I try to read that quote at least once a week to remind myself that who am I not to shine? I liberate other people by me being me. So practicing that, going on Facebook Live every day, sharing with other people, being doing Instagram stories, sharing on LinkedIn every day, allowed me to create that habit of believing that I am worthy of love, self-love. I am worthy of sharing my message. I do have value. I am not broken. And as a result, me training myself helped me be able to build up a healthy self-confidence. Now, I'm not crazy like the guys on Tiger King that starts creating their own uh, country music songs and they become, they start a whole show and they start killing animals and like all this stuff. No, I'm not that crazy. You don't have to go to a crazy, crazy extreme. And some people will think you're crazy for putting yourself out there because their own insecurities are going to come out. Right. But most people will actually love you for sharing your true authentic self. Right. And if you can get over that, if you can discover yourself, you can figure out your strengths, your values. If you can figure out your purpose in life, you're going to be much more motivated to do that. Well, I'm getting out of my comfort zone doing this because you know, I can't stand being in front of a camera. I'm a behind the scenes girl, but I want to help people in the business since COVID hit. Um, trying to help, you know, my industry and other people who have businesses and it's fun and I need to be out there and engaging because um, it's important to hear the message, not just me writing it, but I have a lot to offer and help people in my industry as well. So I'm, I'm working through it and I'm just like everybody think, oh, Annette, you're so outgoing and I can stand on a stage with, you know, millions of people and I'm fine. But behind a camera, it's psychological. And once I get on, I'm fine. But, you know, and I do Zoom meetings all the time, but it's different. So I totally agree. I totally agree. And here's another thing I want to add about fear. Focus equals feeling. I'll write this down in the chat. Focus equals feeling. What does that mean? Where focus goes, energy flows. If you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling disempowering feelings, well, you're just giving energy to worry. You're giving energy to feelings that are not going to help you move forward. I heard an analogy this morning from a guy. He said, your body's like a Bentley. Your body's like the most expensive car. It can go 210 miles an hour. It has a 12-cylinder engine. You know that there's no speed limit in the whole country that's 210 miles an hour. Right. But having anxiety is like going to your driveway, getting into your Bentley, which is your car, and revving the engine all the way up to the top and not going anywhere until either the car breaks or you run out of gas. Right. So if you worry, 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 you're going to get your heart rate all the way up. You're going to get yourself all anxious. You're either going to get a panic attack or a heart attack. Either way, it's not good for the car. It's not good for the body. So you have to learn how to focus because that's what's creating the anxiety. You focusing on what can go wrong, on the doubt. Right. Don't focus on the doubt instead of focus on the clout. Because focus on what you have inside. Because you know, once you do it consistently, you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this before? And I do it every single time I'm afraid of something. Even when I started my business 10 years ago, I was like, what in the heck am I doing? Um, but you know, you just got to work through it. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, that's, this is nothing. I can do this. And then you jump onto the next group. I feel like if I have fear on something, I need to do it I need to get past it because there's something bigger on the other side. That's there right. always is. There always is something bigger on the other side, and it's such a beautiful way of looking at it. They say that uh, they say that if you follow your frustration, if you follow your frustration, it will lead you to your greatest fear. Right. And when you overcome your greatest fear, what's on the other side of that is your potential. Right. Most people they get stuck in their frustration and they don't take action. Right. Now, what I want you to use to start taking action when you have fear is this powerful word called courage. And write this down if you want to, because courage is action in spite of fear. Most people think that courage means I don't have fear. Eh, wrong. If you didn't have fear, you didn't need courage. 
Courage is still doing it even if you're not certain, even if you have fear, even if you have uncertainty, even if you feel like you're not good enough and you still take action, all work is good work. Even if it's not perfect, it's still work. Even if you're not getting results, it's still work. And when you work harder on yourself than you work on your business, when you work harder on yourself than anyone can be on you, that's when you're eventually going to start getting results. You've got to do the work. Most people, they want to get rich, get rich quick, lose weight fast, and not put in the work. They want to work smart, not hard. I say work smart and hard. Put in the hard work. But be smart by having the right strategies, getting the right mentors, getting the right coaches, watching the right seminars, uh, watching the right Facebook uh, messages, the Facebook videos that will actually help you, then taking notes and implementing them in your life. Right. It's anything. If you learn it, if you learn it and you're educated about it, you're not going to be fearful. It's just like events. I can stand on the stage and talk about it because I know about events i know what i'm doing i it's you know it's definitely gets you past that so being educated about it is important okay so i have a couple more questions we're almost getting to the end i could talk to you forever but deborah's asking how do i become more consistent when it comes to linkedin posting and i think we did touch on that i think i asked overcoming that overcoming fear just overcoming fear okay and i have one more um mona lisa do you know my friend mona lisa mona lisa mona lisa mona lisa mona lisa no i don't She's fantastic, and you must know her. She's fabulous. I'm going to have her on uh, sometime, too, because she's an, a brilliant person. Okay, so um, she couldn't be on because she's driving to Dallas right now, but she wanted to know, um, how can you access more people? Let's see. It turns into a big market. Okay, so when you reach out to people, and then they turn, it turns into like this big marketing thing, and they start blasting you with all your marketing, how do you... Um, and then they trick you into trying to sell something to you. How do you take the premier plan to work for us? So she's in the premier plan and she's she wants for LinkedIn premium. Correct. The premium plan. Uh-huh. So how do you how do you leverage LinkedIn premium? So so often often people ask me a different question that's very similar to that is should I pay for LinkedIn? That's a very popular question. And then people that are paying for LinkedIn say, How do I leverage the fact that I'm paying for LinkedIn? Because I'm already paying for this thing. How do I use it? Right. So what, I, what I always tell people the following, and you can write this down. People that pay, pay attention. I'll say this again. People that pay, pay attention. So if you're paying for LinkedIn, you're much more likely to use it just because you're paying for it. But there are features when you pay for LinkedIn that you have access to that most people don't have access to. Number one is caller ID. You can see the last 90 days of people that looked at your profile on LinkedIn if you pay for LinkedIn premium. So if you're paying for LinkedIn, the one thing I would encourage you to do every single day is just visit that page, bookmark it and visit it. Who looked at my profile? Right. There's a button that you can click and look at that and go and connect with the people that looked at your profile. Message the people that are connected to you saying, hey, a little birdie told me that you're checked out my profile. Right. Thank you, you so much for checking out my profile. I have a whole template that I send out. I have out. a template for that. Yeah. I, right. And, and we, use, we use tools that will automatically fill out the template and automatically allow us to click one button and send it to people. Very, very powerful. Now, the other thing that you can do is use Sales Navigator to build a list of prospects that you can ask your connections to introduce you to because they have really, really great advanced search filters for accounts and for leads. And there's a lot of other advanced stuff that you can do. But the basic idea is that people that pay, pay attention. If you really want to leverage LinkedIn, you should probably pay for it if you're serious about it. You know, it's only a few hundred dollars a year. It's not that expensive. So if you get one client from it, it pays for itself. But you have to learn how to do it. In our course, we have um, a Sales Navigator 101 and 201 bonus that we include with our entire nine-module course on how to use LinkedIn. But the bottom line is, that uh, check out who looked at your profile once a day, and that will make sure that it pays for itself. And also check to see that it might be a good connection for you. Like if it's just another mark, like a digital marketer or someone that's like in the air, you know, in the service and doesn't look like you know, you get a lot of those spammy things. So make sure that it also matches what you want to. Brenda with. wants to know what app we're using right now to have this whole setup. It's called StreamYard. Who told you about, who told you about StreamYard, Annette? Well, um, Liz King, you know, Liz King Caruso, she um, used yeah. it on her summit. 
and I've watched it. And I just like it because it's it's just a nice platform. It's it's professional. It's it's easier than Zoom. And then I get to plug in people and get people out here. People love to be you know brought up onto the screen. So um, it's a really easy platform to use, and it's cheaper than uh, webinars for Zoom. So I use it. But um, Streamyard, yeah. Cool. So Joe. Where can everyone reach you? I mean, obviously you've been talking about that, but and talked about this course you have um, and how everybody can get in touch with you. Yeah, so the best way to get in touch with me is to go to my LinkedIn profile and go to joelinkedin.com. That's J-O-E, linkedin.com. Um, our course is available at evergreen.com, but check out our upcoming webinar. We have a webinar that's coming up. I highly recommend you guys subscribe to the webinar, and at the end of the webinar, you'll learn more about the course. Um, but go definitely check out that webinar. Download our 30 Tips ebook. Um, I'm posting links to all the stuff in the comments. I posted it multiple times. But definitely go check out those resources available. And we're here to support you and anything that you need. Either check out my LinkedIn profile, follow my content, um, connect with me. Let me know you saw me on Annette's program. Um, and uh, thank you so much for being part of this. Right. And if you're not connected with me on LinkedIn, it's AnnetteLinkedIn.com. And you guys can change your URL to that. Joe taught me that. So it's AnnetteLinkedIn.com. And um, pretty soon I'm going to be announcing a workshop for event planners. And I'm also going to be doing a virtual workshop for people who want to learn about how to do virtual events. So stay tuned. I'm going to be putting that together, which is going to be awesome. And uh, Joe, I love you to pieces. Thank you so much for being on today. And I hope everyone got some great value. Thank you very much. If you guys can take a moment and in the comments of this post, just write the one or two things that you got out of this um, that you're going to go do right away. That would be really, really helpful. We covered so much on this video. You might want to go and, and watch the replay of this video. If Annette makes it available, go watch the replay. And of course, please send your friends to this by tagging a few people in the comments of this saying, hey, guys, check out this video. It's really cool. Um, that would be really, really helpful. So thank you for that. And of course, if you can hit the share button and share it with your network, that would also be very, very helpful. On Facebook, it's really easy to share stuff. Yes. Um, and it, it's not weird to share stuff on Facebook. So just click the share button. I see so far it was shared one time by me. Um, but feel free to, to share the message with the world by clicking the share button. Um, and thank you very much for watching this and looking forward to seeing you guys on LinkedIn. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.